Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to talk to you about one of the new features. There's a new release of Luminar and uh, the popular software from Skylum, and maybe there are others of you that are currently in um, isolation or dealing with uh, some restrictions on your movements right now, and so maybe you're looking for a project and to have some fun. And so I wanna demonstrate uh, some of these new AI techniques in Luminar, including their new sky object placement, and so some interesting things to be found there. Now, I wanna offer up just a little bit of a caveat before I jump into this. I'm gonna demonstrate this to you. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm not here really to enter the debate as to what constitutes photography and what constitutes digital art. I think that we're definitely entering into a place to where we are going beyond just editing photos, um, improving a, a photo through you know editing techniques. This is obviously manipulating and altering it to some degree. And I know that some of you are completely turned off by that entire notion. I get it, and I think it's really important as a photographer to be um, to be honest about what you're doing. If you're wanting to create, you know, a fine art, digital art type um, end result creation, then identify it as such. You know, don't pretend that you managed to nail some kind of perfect conditions in getting a shot, particularly if it's not, you know, a credible thing. So I don't think that this should be about deception. At the same time, I don't think that if we live in a day where artists have the ability have these kind of tools at their disposal. I don't think that artists need to be necessarily limited by a, a medium. I think that each one of you have to make an individual decision as to what constitutes your brand of photography slash art creation. And so um, please in the comments, you know, don't lose your mind over this. Some of you are going to find this great fun and in a way of really kind of creatively expressing yourself. And, and then some of you are going to find this an abomination. So anyway, without further ado, do. Let's jump in and let's take a look at some of these new features in Luminar. So let's take a look at this image here and look at some of the things that we can do. So to access some of these new features, you're going to want to go down to the creative tab. And so here we're going to start with the AI sky replacement. And so I'm just going to use one of their kind of, um, you know, generic ones. We're not going to go over the top here. And so you can see, uh, first of all, and I could go in and, and in the final image that you see, I've gone through and I've tweaked it just a little bit to optimize what we're getting. But anyway, this gives you an idea that this actually works with this image. It's the sky that I liked. Now, beyond that, I also have a, another option, and that is to go into this augmented sky. And so what I am going to add to this image is an eagle. This is where we get into kind of the new stuff here. And so here is my object here. Now, obviously right now, I don't find that very credible, very believable, it's too obvious, it's not blending the way that I'd want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose place object. So first of all, I want to put it in a better position. Um, and then most importantly, I'm going to want to really, really scale it down. Um, and so that we end up with a more kind of credible type result here. And so then once I have been able to pop that in, I'm able to then have an image that I really like the look of. So here's a look at the finished result here uh, of that image. And so you can see it's a, you know, it's a pretty cool end result, particularly when you consider that this is what we started with. Now this image has its own kind of beauty, you know, kind of a stark beauty, but there's no doubt that the digital creation that we made is something that has a lot more drama and is more eye-catching. Now for our second example, we'll take a look and we're gonna do a few things with this image just to show you kind of some of your creative options. So first of all, if we just go to, again, to the creative tab, A -Aug augmented sky, we're going to choose a balloon. And so you have to really kind of be sensitive to what's going to work within a certain image. And, and I like to do, just kind of in terms of your order, I like to put things into an image. If you're going to do something like this, to do it maybe a, do it at an early stage before you do any other edits. What you're gonna want is if you're gonna change the kind of look of the image at all, is that you want to be able then to kind of do a, a global look that's going to affect everything, including the object that you've created. And so that instead of standing out with different lighting or a different kind of toning effect, that it kind of you know fits in what you have established. So here, after just doing a few more tweaks, you have the end result that we have got here. And so, um, you know, it looks cool. Um, is it believable? 
it depends on how closely you're looking. Um, you know, you're going to have to make your own determination on that. But I want to show you a far more dramatic approach to this. So the first thing that I did, and uh, this is kind of a way to get the most out of this, if you're wanting to go for a kind of a cool, moody type effect, is that I took that image that we just looked at, obviously without the balloon, and I uh, turned it into kind of a moody uh, black and white image. Now this time what I am going to do is I am going to show you using something of my own. And so we're going to load something here into the sky. So here I've loaded a moon into here. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring that moon on down. Uh, just kind of scale it in there to give it some drama. And, and obviously, in this case, I actually feel like this has done a, a quite a good job of doing all of the, you know, the fine kind of work in terms of the masking. And, and so, but that's really helped by kind of preparing the image in advance by giving it a mood that's going to fit the object that I want to put into it. So then if I apply that, and then, you know, very importantly, again, I've gone through and then I've done toning work after the fact to give it kind of a blue, kind of ghostly type uh, kind of light. But then, because I've done that as the final stage, all of these things have blurred together in a natural way. And so while this is not credible in the sense of the moon is not going to be that large in relation to that, and certainly not with this kind of focal length, it provides, if not a believable, a very fun fantasy type image. Let me give you one more direct example. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to replace the sky. And notice I started with something with a kind of just a bland sky. And, and often that's going to be you know, a better end result. And in this case, I, I actually just, as you can see from these samples, I just shoot the sky on occasion or the moon. And that kind of gives you some things to work with, some options here. So what I'm going to do here is actually turn this into a, I've got a, a snowy kind of scene here. And so I'm going to turn this into kind of a dr dramatic uh, scene here for what I want to do. Now, I'm not going to spend time while we're displaying, uh, kind of tweaking the masking this to give it a more believable result. I'll show you what we end up with in just a moment. But what I've done is I've started with the kind of the stars. Now we're going to go to a second tool and we're going to see um, how that we can place something like the Aurora in here. So I'm going to place that object. Okay. And so here, obviously there needs to be a little bit of tweaking to the, um, the masking here. And so um, I'm going to kind of be careful with how I work with that. And, you know, and so then I can go into the advanced settings. I can either refine the mask. I can make the object more or less in, well, not more in focus, but less in focus. I can tweak some other things as a part of this, but just adding the Aurora to the original image would not have been credible. And as you're going to see, there's, there's more steps to it than this to, to make a believable end result. But let me just show you what I was able to accomplish by playing around with this. After defining things a little bit further, here's what I ended up as an end result. And again, after the final kind of toning stage, which I was able to do in Luminar to create a look, I like to do it in multiple passes and that way uh, I kind of end up with a better end result. But what you can see is that while it's not technically perfect in every detail, it's a cool image. Um, it's fun. It, again, it has that kind of fantasy element. And really, if you're going to be doing this, you are going more into a stage of, you know, doing something more like digital art. And so I think you have to treat it like that. So let me give you a few more examples of ways I've played around and what I've ended results. So here's what I, I started with. And by playing around, I created this kind of end result, which, you know, to me is, again, it's fun. It's moody. It's not, you know, credible or believable in every detail, but the overall impression is something that would look great for a book title or some kind of dramatic piece of digital art. Here's one final example I want to share with you. And so this is the image that I started with. And because I decided I wanted to do something with the lightning, which would be, a, you know, we very rarely get any kind of lightning with a winter storm, but I thought it would be fun. So the first thing I did was kind of darken up the image to give it kind of this result. And then by placing the lightning in the sky, and this is just one of their um, techniques. And so I moved it around. Obviously you want to position it in the right way. But again, end result here is a, a fun image that I think has some visual pop to it. And because it is something unique, it allows, um, it allows it to be a creation that people can enjoy and, you know, without getting too lost in the weeds of whether or not it is credible or not. 
So as you can see, there are a lot of creative tools there at your disposal and the ability to really create some unique things. I want to kind of um, finish up here by talking to you about if you're wanting to create your own objects. I mean, obviously one of the challenges when you're using a piece of software like Luminar and whether it be sky or placing objects, if you don't want your images to look just like everybody else is out there that are using the, the stock images, you're going to have to kind of become a little bit more intentional about creating either objects or skies of your own. And so you need to be intentional sometimes about just shooting the sky without trying to include any other objects. Just think about the sky for using in other applications. Likewise with objects, it's going to work best if you kind of learn how to create cutouts um, either of objects or um, and so, you know, you need to kind of create them in a PNG type style. And so I'm not going to delve into all of that, but you need to be thinking about that and creating a shooting in such a way as to where you have really clean edges on objects and so that they're easy to cut out. And, and so they end up giving you a credible result in something like this. So maybe something to bear in mind. And I'm sure that there will be artists out there that will, you know, create objects that you can use. You can put into images. I know people like Jessica Drossen, for example, are really great at that kind of thing amongst others. So anyway, uh, just kind of bear those things in mind. And if you would like to play with this some more, I'm going to throw linkage in the description down below. There is, you know, there's obviously a trial where you can, you can try it out. Also, if you're interested in buying, there is a coupon code there that will help you to get a discounted price on it. And so uh, take a look, play with it if you're interested and move ahead with that. There's also linkage there to follow me on social media, to become a patron, to sign up for my newsletter. And of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.